who is VP and General Manager of uh, New Watch Networks from Nokia, and he's going to talk about wide area networking on your terms. All right, Saurabh, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, you want to yep. stand here or you want to? I'll use this. I'll use this. Stay in the light. I'll stay in the light. All right, folks, great to be here in person uh, after many years. And while the pandemic raged and ravaged parts of the world, uh, the industry and Nuage have made great strides in terms of the technology and breadth of reach of the same as well during this time. And I want to give you a perspective, which maybe is slightly different than Amit's, but leads to the same point in terms of how the wide area network itself is changing and how the concept of SASE and SSE assimilate into that concept. So first of all, if you look at SD-WAN, the way we look at it, I think we are in the third generation of SD-WAN. When SD-WAN started, it was all about replacing MPLS and VPLS-based branch-to-branch connectivity with cloud-based automation. That was the first wave. Later on, the concepts of local breakout connectivity to cloud got tacked on. That's sort of the second wave. But what we see over, at least let's say, over the last 18 months or so is what we call the third wave of SD-WAN. And this, this is based on three principles or three tenets. One, as Amit was saying, the IT is cloud-centric. The cloud is the center of the universe. That's number one. Number two, security tends to be distributed, which sort of will bring us to SASE. And number three, there's a range of users who are not in a traditional branch office, whether those are you know, using mobile devices, whether they have tablets, or these are actually IoT endpoints, and they all need to be assimilated within the policy as well as the management framework and the automation that SD-WAN provides. So to look at sort of the evolution of this third phase or the third dimension of SD-WAN, it's, it's, it, I find it instructive to look at some of these studies that have been done, and here's one that I find particularly useful. So John Burke at Nemetes Research came out with this VAN study, and the key takeaway there is the fact that 74% of the enterprise branch traffic is off VAN. That means 74% of the traffic is not going from branch to branch, and that's a big deal. And if we break it down further, almost 27.5% is going to the cloud. Equal number, 28% is coming back in from the cloud, whereas 18.5% of the enterprise traffic is within the cloud or is coming from endpoints such as mobile and IoT, which we traditionally do not consider as part of the branch. And this, this is important because this, this, is, this phenomenon, this trend is what's driving the evolution of the van itself. And as we look at it, we have to rethink how the van is structured. And what that means is we have to place the cloud at the center of the van. This does not mean that the van is any less important than it was before. As a matter of fact, I would argue the flexibility, the scale, the distributed nature, the open protocols that van need to have is more important than ever before. It needs to now interwork not only branch offices, but also IoT, mobile endpoints, work from home uh, audiences, and at the same time being resilient and being open to security add-ons. If we look at further at some of the vendors and fellow vendors in this room who were not traditional WAN or IP networking vendors, they are now part of this journey. And that's been great from enterprise innovation, enterprise flexibility perspective. But one thing we have to remember that not all enterprises are created equal. And that brings me to this little concept called SASE. At the end of the day, SASE is an architectural framework. And what it calls out is, at, at the root of it, is the fact that as users and applications are distributed, so ought to be the security and network functions. And from that point of view, it is incredibly powerful, it is incredibly future-proof. And it combines, another way to break it down is it combines SD-WAN and SSE as cloud security components. But there, to treat SASE as a single vendor product will be a mistake. To take it as the architectural concept is the way we need to evolve the industry. And the reason for that is no enterprise is created the same. 
the WAN as well as security requirements differ based on their geographic reach, their core business, the nature of their land design, and this, the flexibility that we have brought to the industry with SD-WAN, with the openness, and which has created this new range of vendors, we don't want to take it back by the introduction of SASE. A slight digression here. Um, you know, there's this fable from the 70s and 80s that talked about the fact that nobody ever got fired for buying IBM mainframes. Now, you know, but voila, as you moved along the 80s, mini computers came in, followed by PCs, virtualization, cloud, and so on. So that whole notion got destroyed in the process. And while we move towards SASE as an architectural framework, I'm sure as a community, as a grouping, we don't want to go back to the same world and say that everything ought to be brought from a single vendor. What we need is the flexibility of choice. And this is important because you want to future-proof yourself from innovation, from change that is coming down the line that none of us can predict or determine. Same as sitting in the 70s and 80s, nobody could have talked about the emergence of the cloud or virtualization. The, and as far as Nuage is concerned, the approach that we have taken towards SASE, when we started out as a SDN company, as Roy was saying, SDN was the, the term back then in 2012, we focused on building a platform with open protocols, with standards-based protocols, with open APIs, and with the flexibility that can cater to a range of data center use cases at that point in time. And we have taken the same paradigm, the same approach, and extended it to SASE, whereby our SD-WAN platform provides an abstraction with which you can plug in a range of SSE vendors. And this plug-and-play approach gives flexibility, gives openness, and gives the choice back to the enterprise where it belongs. It's the political season in US, so in a way, I'll call ourselves as the pro-choice SD-WAN company. Uh, the, the impact of this choice, going back to innovation, is also the extension of use cases that we can provide with our open approach. The, we have a thing called Service Edge, which is the abstraction on top of which you can plug in multiple SSE vendors. Some of it, those are partners, and some of those actually are competitors. And, but that's the choice we want to provide to the enterprise based on their use case, based on their demands. But what it has also done, the service edge, is extend the reach of SD-WAN policy, the SD-WAN cloud automation to use cases, including IoT endpoints, which have traditionally struggled to be connected onto the cloud and to, and to headquarter resources. Mobile workers who are out in the field, who, again, without requiring any VPN client, can, again, be connected back into the cloud and be subject to the same policy, the same control, the same management plane that the on-prem or branch workers are subjected to. And finally, and this is important, the Frix broadband. As we talk about work from home, as we talk about extending the SASE concept, not just to your traditional branch offices, but some of the SMBs, the audience that is, that is more distributed, bringing the Frix broadband assets that work on technologies such as GPON and have ONTs, and there are millions of those, again, bringing them back into the, the same policy framework. And that's the power of the abstraction that we have developed. We call it Service Edge. We have a full session on it uh, later in the conference, and I would highly encourage you to attend that. Digging a little bit deeper into these use cases, the first one around mobile and IoT, the idea here is to attract the traffic from enterprise SIM-based devices and IoT sensors onto the Nuage service edge without requiring any change or without requiring any additional client to run on these devices. And that's, that's, the, that's the magic sauce, that's, that's the secret ingredient that we have, but once that traffic reaches the service edge, it can, it can be subjected to the SD-WAN policy, as well as be bought within the, within the confines or the constructs of your SSE solution of choice. The second use case, of course, is plug and play with SSE. That's, that's the basis of our SASE approach. That's the basis of the open architecture that 
we are promoting towards SASE. And finally, the aspect around the, the fixed broadband assets, whereby, again, these devices, the traffic can be attracted onto the SD-1 platform and be subjected to the same security and policy as the traditional branch offices. To end, let me leave you with a, a customer use case, an example of a multi-vendor SASE architecture that we have deployed. This is an Australasian, which means Australia and New Zealand-based patent manufacturer and retailer, one of the largest in that part of the world. And they have a range of retail shops, distribution and manufacturing. And it may seem like a simple retail case, but it's anything but. Their front of the shop experience is very traditional. Of course, it has point of sales. It has private and public Wi-Fi. It consists of integration back into their supply chain. But their back of the shop has involves being able to mix and match paints to get the right tints to be able to have their trucks that are, that are in motion be, uh, deliver the quantities of the, the ingredients and the components, the chemicals that are needed in real time. And they have sensors where, which whereby the central IT can monitor the, the quality uh, of the, of the uh, asset that's been delivered to each of these stores. And they have used a combination of nuage as well as SSC solution to, uh, in this case, it happens to be Zscaler, but, but the idea remains the same, to, to cater to their, their particular security as well as network use case. The point is that note, again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, no two enterprises are the same. And with the emergence of SASE, it is important that the openness and the flexibility that we gained with SD-WAN, we don't filter it away and we continue to evolve towards it. With that, I'll stop here and hand it back to Roy. Thank you, Alex.